Hello, welcome everybody to this tutorial on Arduino syntax. Now in the last tutorial we talked about the Arduino integrated development environment. We got familiar with the buttons, uh, some of the information on the screen, and where we could find different examples. Now in this tutorial we're going to start getting our hands dirty with computer programming syntax. So I like to use this analogy with syntax. So syntax is to computer language as grammar is to written language. So if you've ever written a sense, sentence before, you know it might have a period, there may be a comma in there, might have a semicolon or a dash, and all those grammatical instruments are conveying information to the reader. Computer programming languages have the same thing, and it's called syntax. So let's go ahead, what I want you to do is go to File, Examples, Basics, and we're going to open up Digital Read Serial. Okay, so before you like barf out your brain and be like, man, what is all this stuff on this page? We're just going to take everything piece by piece. And so it might look like a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense. And it might look like that for a while. But, but what we're going to do is talk about just the smaller elements of syntax in here. So the first thing I want you to draw your attention to is what is called the comment. Okay, so let's look right here. Here is, there's two forward slashes right here. And what that does is you'll notice all the words on the uh, line following those forward slashes is grayed out. And basically what that does is the comment tells the compiler to ignore that line of code. So you can notice up here there, uh, there's a forward slash and asterisk and then there's a bunch of written stuff and then a close uh, and then another asterisk and a, and a forward slash. And what this does is this is a multi-line comment. So if I wrote, if I just wrote stuff under here, see how that's not grayed out? That's because I don't have uh, the comment line. So now it's grayed out. I take that away, it goes ungrayed. Do you follow that? So if you have a single line, it's just two. And if you have a multi-line comment, it's lots. So, okay, great. It makes stuff gray. Well, what does that mean to me? Well, let me tell you what that means. Comments allow you to explain to yourself or more importantly, a future version of yourself, what exactly you were doing when you wrote a piece of code. So let's say, for example, this line of code right here. Uh, and we're not going to get into what exactly it means, but uh, it says INT, which stands for integer. It's, we've got a name, push button, and then it's equal to 2. Well, if we didn't have this comment right here, we might be wondering, well, OK, it's probably a push button equal to 2, but what exactly does that mean? Well, here in the comment, the author has written very explicitly, digital pin 2 has a push button attached to it, give it a name. So this comment has allowed me, who's now reading this program, to understand exactly what this variable does. And then you'll know in, know in this multi-line comment, there's all types of information about um, what the program does. And here it talks about, it says it's in the public domain. So the point I'm trying to get across here with comments is they provide information to you, so when you forget what you wrote, it will tell you why, and to other people, so if they want to use your code, they know what you wrote. So that's, that's the comment. Again, there's a single line comment and a multi-line comment. Okay, so moving on. You might have looked down at this first line of code and said, okay, interesting, interesting. Well, what, what's the deal with the semicolon? Well, a semicolon is to grammar what a period is. So at the, ever, at the end of every statement of code, you're going to have a semicolon. That lets the compiler know that you are done with that statement of code. So you'll notice down here, here's a statement right there. We have a semicolon, semicolon. All right, that's pretty much what the semicolon is. You will get an error if you forget a semicolon. So every single line of code that you write that's not a function is going to have a semicolon following it. Semicolons, very important. You're going to see them all over the place. Remember, they have to go at the end of every statement. OK, so far we've talked about the single line comment, a multi-line comment, and then we talked about the semicolon. Now we're going to talk about the opening curly bracket. But before we can really talk about that opening curly bracket right there, we have to talk about what all this gibberish is right here. OK, so this gibberish is called a function. Now there's two very common functions that you will use in almost every Arduino program that you write. They're called, it's called setup and loop. 
So the setup function, and let me say, what a function does is it basically encapsulates an extremely useful piece of code and then reduces it to a single keyword which allows you to rapidly uh, implement that piece of code. So setup, it's only one word, but behind the scenes, setup is like this big function that does lots of stuff. There's lots of, you know, there's lines of code that go behind setup, but we don't have to worry about that. We just write setup, we put the opening and closing parenthesis, we put our opening curly bracket, and now we can use all the power of setup. So what setup does is it basically sets up the program. This is where you're going to like initialize a pin as an input or output on your Arduino. You might set some baseline parameters for your program. You might start serial communication. You know, if all that sounds foreign to you right now, don't worry, we're going to get deep into the details about that. But what I want you to know is setup when the program executes, it only runs once, so all the stuff in the setup function gets run once and then you're done with it. Now, the loop, a function, just like setup, however, the loop is really the meat and potatoes of the function, and the loop runs over and over again. So the Arduino is going to look at the first line of code, it's going to execute that, and then it's going to look at the next line, execute that, so on and so forth, till it gets to the bottom, till it gets to that curling, curly closing bracket, and then it's going to start right back up at the top and do it over and over again. That's why they call it loop. Now, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of a lot you can do with that, but you'd be amazed what variation you can get out of a program that runs over and over again. So the reason I started explaining these functions really though is because I wanted to introduce you to some more syntax. So here's setup. There's an opening and a closing parenthesis after every function. And notice when I have my cursor, where I do my put my cursor that the closing parenthesis opens. Let's look down here. Here's a function. It's called serial begin. And when I put my cursor right next to that, right after that parenthesis, you'll notice that a box goes around the end, the closing parenthesis. Same down here, pin mode, this is another function. You'll notice that that box goes around the closing. And if I put my cursor after that one, notice the box goes around the opening parenthesis. Now you might be wondering, well, what is this word void in front of setup? I'll tell you what, it doesn't really matter if you know or not. But, and we'll get into it later, what void basically says is that this function does not return any information back to uh, the program. So it's basically performing a function, and that function in and of itself is, is all you need. You're not getting any, you're not getting like a number back from setup or something like that. That's what void means. But all you really need to be concerned about is that the word void is in front of setup and the word void is in front of loop. Otherwise, you're going to be pretty good. Okay. So we talked about these curly bra or these parentheses. Now let's talk about the curly bracket. After many functions, there's going to be an open curly bracket. And so what a curly brace or bracket does is it encloses further instructions carried out by the function. So there's always an opening curly bracket, and then there's always a closing curly bracket. And notice the similarity with the parentheses. When I put that cursor after the opening curly bracket, it puts a box around the closing. And if I put one around the closing, it puts a box around the opening. They do this, this whole box thing, because people forget to close them, and then it makes, it makes it a pain in the butt. So remember, every opening curly bracket has a closing curly bracket. And that's pretty much all the syntax I wanted to show you right now. I know it doesn't seem much, but let's review real quick. So we have the single line comment. We have the multi-line comment. We have the semicolon. A semicolon must go after every statement. We have functions, like so. Functions have opening and closing parentheses. And some functions have opening curly brackets. And every opening curly bracket has a closed curly bracket. Okay, so, geez, you might be thinking, man, that, that wasn't really that much. But I'll tell you what, you're going to use those four components over and over and over. Think about how many periods are in a book. Think about how many commas. So your sketch is going to have lots of these and it's important that you start to get familiar with them. That's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial we're going to start with our first program blinking an LED. Thanks so much for joining me today and I look forward to talking to you next time.